so this is another study. So this time, uh, Jeremy Krebs, he was interested in the first study, and he was interested in does it work with adults as well, because we didn't know the answer to that. So Esco, Jeremy, and I um, decided to get the study up and running, and we ran it in the, in the community again, and we just wanted to find out whether 0.3 grams per kilogram worked better with adults than the standard 15 gram, which the international guidelines uh, basically state. So we got 30 subjects all with type 1 diabetes. Um, we enrolled them. We got baseline data, the height and weight, hemoglobin A1C. And then we, with our protocol, we designed it so it's either 0.2 or 0.3, because a lot of people still believe that 0.3 is too strong. <coughs> too much glucose. The 0.3 in a 100 kilogram person is 30 grams of glucose you're going to throw at them. Should you just translate that into Mentos? <laughs> uh, one Mentos is 2.8 gram. One glucose tablet is 3 grams. So we just say it's about the same amount. Um, in Mentos, you're talking about, depending upon their weight, 7 to 10 Mentos for an average size 100 kilogram person. <laughs> it's a lot of chewing, or a full can of full can of lemonade, full can of of let's just say not coke. Um, so we 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 decided to do all the calculations, and they were recorded in a, in a systematic way, so that we can make sure that the protocol was quite tight. Um, so the treatment <coughs> episodes were randomly assigned by mystery envelopes. So they'd have a hypo, they'd have their envelope with them, they'd have their hypo equip, a treatment with them, and when they open an envelope, it will tell you what they're to take, whether it was 0 0.2, 0 0.3, or um, a control of 15 grams. Uh, they all had their own meters. At that time, it was the ActiCheck meter. Uh, and like the first study, we decided to test them at point at zero, and then 10 minutes later. Um, if the hypo persisted after 10 minutes, we asked them to retreat, and if once it's resolved, we got them to take 20 grams of complex carbohydrate. So, we managed to get 418 episodes. Of the 34 subjects, there were 21 male and 13 female. They ranged from 22 to 71 years old, and there was one violation which we had to exclude from the analysis because the lady didn't like the taste of the, of the um, dextro tablets at that time, and she thought it was better to eat a bag of lollies. <laughs> and so the, the study, the data was useless. Two withdrew because once again they didn't like the taste of the dextro tablets. Uh, so we ended up with analysing 395 episodes. Of that, there were 101 retreatments. And there were 18 re retreatments. So the data looked a bit like this. So what we found was if, <coughs> if you look at the yellow portions up here, um, the change in blood glucose level at 10 minutes from, from most of them were around there 3.1 to 10. Uh, 3.1, and then at 10 minutes, in the 0.2 group, they changed by a small amount. 15 gram, a little better amount, but the most significant difference was in the 0.3 grams, mm. and that was quite statistically significant. And from baseline, you've got a 1.1 millimole change with the 0.2, 1.2 with the 15 gram, but you got almost a 1.5 with the weight-based treatment. And that again was quite s significant. That was after 10 minutes. After 10 minutes. Got to keep in mind that this is before the ADA changed the rules uh, last year, and we now retreat at 15 minutes. So that's the difference in, in a graphical format. So you can see that 0.3 works quite well at 10 minutes. 
without rebound hyperglycemia. So you're not going to get the huge, people think you're going to get a huge high recording afterwards. You don't. Uh, similarly, once again, this is from the starting point to 10 minutes later. And this is the frequency of retreatments. Now, we initially offered them one treatment, but what we've found out of this piece of research is that if they're below 3.1, often those people need to be offered two treatments straight up. So they, if you want to get on top of the hypo faster, you need to almost offer them 0.6 grams per kilogram to get a, a quick response within the 15 minute time frame. So as a result of that study, we were able to conclude that weight-based treatment in adults worked with type 1 diabetes worked as well. And we were able to determine that the blood glucose levels would shift by approximately 1.5 millimole. Uh, that piece of research we got published in, and I'm sorry it's a bit blurry, but we got that published in um, 2015 in diabetic medicine, so that's one of the highest impact journals around. So because of that, we've changed our policy at CCDHB for managing hypoglycemia on the wards. And our default position is to offer everyone on the wards 30 grams of glucose. Now, the average person, that, that would work out well if you want to reconvert back to the weight-based theory, that's the average of about a 100 kilogram person. Uh, we still treat children at 0.3 grams per kilogram and we have a study running in type 2 diabetes at the moment. So I hope to have that closed off by the end of the year and then analysed beginning of next year. But with the type 2 study, we're looking at an even larger quantity of glucose to treat a hypo because there are more than 100 kilograms a lot of these people enrolled. So would you give a time or something? We, we, we cap it at this stage right. until we find the results of this final study, we cap it at 30 grams. But you do find that anecdotally from people, the heavier people on the wards, the nurses are going to have to cheat twice anyway. And that's what we were finding in the early days before we changed the policy. Nurses would, would go and treat a hypo with 15 grams of liquid glucose, go away, do a few things, come back, and the patients were still not up, so they'd give them another 15 gram of liquid glucose. And then you may find that the person's up about half an hour later. Now that's a long time to be feeling hypo. And you're retreating at 15 minutes now? 15 minutes now. Um, I'm going to give you a handout that we have developed locally before I move on to my third piece of research. Um, and the, the weight-based research we won't be discussing. Uh, so the, the the, the type 2 research we won't be discussing. So has this been taken up nationally? Um, DHB? So far our DHB, the HUT DHB and some DHBs in, or some districts in Australia. So um, it's, you know, I, I don't have a lot of time to publish, but I think our finals, when we, when we get the four studies and put them all together, we'll have enough of information to get a few papers out of it and then you know, the rest of the country may catch up. But it seems considerable, doesn't it? Time in the wards, mm -hmm. This is another earlier piece of research that I want you to just look at. This was done in 1984. It is um, another situation where it's a clinical trial there were approximately 40 people that were brought into a clinic setting. They were induced with insulin to have hypoglycemia. They were of what they call normal weight and they were given various amounts of carbohydrate and they were mapped over uh, an hour. So as you can see, the lowest point here, they allowed them to drop to 2.8 millimoles per litre. Uh, 20 grams of glucose, you did manage to get 
a shift from 2.8 to 5.7, about a three millimole shift. Um, with milk, it didn't really work at all, and nor did the orange juice at the lower level. It didn't work at all terribly well. The point I'm actually wanting to put this up here is the fact that we now know that blood glucose levels after 40 minutes will fall. They'll have another hypo after 40 minutes, at some stage after 40. And the reason for that is that you've still got insulin or self urea working in the background. So unless they have some complex carbohydrate, they will continue to fall. So the rules that we actually put in place now, or our teaching, I'm going to hand these to you to hand around. This is what we've put together for, for the Wellington region. The DMPP group. The, the DMPP group. I heard of, you've all heard about the DMPP group this morning. I'll give you all those except one. I won't, I won't, um, I won't spend a lot of time on this, but essentially we've put it together to provide better information to the people we see with diabetes. So the first part is how to recognise a hypo. Because a lot of people don't know what a hypo is. So this is a teaching document for clinical people to work through with patients, rather than just hand them out so they can go away and read it themselves. The second page is to tell them to stop and treat a hypo now. There are, there are people who go, yes, I can feel a hypo come on, but I'll just finish off this thing I'm doing now on the computer, and then they go unconscious. So stop and act on hypos now. And then some indications of how many Mentos tablets to take, um, based roughly on their weight. To wait 15 minutes, and then retest to ensure that they are up above four, and then follow it up with some complex carbohydrate. Once we've sorted out what a hypo is, or that situation, and then work through what caused the hypo, and teach the patient, these are the things that will cause a hypo, be aware of it. And that picture there, you've got the artist here. <laughs> Bridget's picture. I'm going to put it to Julie as well. Oh, yeah, Julie, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we had sort of Julie who we had speaking earlier. She was <coughs> unconscious on the floor. <laughs> so at CCDHB, we've actually changed from a number of years ago how we managed hypoglycemia. Because when we did an audit, hypoglycemia was not managed that well. And the events, like the earlier audit, we thought would be about across the CTDHB, about maybe uh, you know, 50, 100 a month. But we were really surprised that we're having about 400 a month. And that was mainly caused through everything on the back of that. Too much medication, food. We had the diabetic diet, and that was like eating fresh air. Um, so that's since been changed. And then um, poor prescribing. Um, with situations where they come in with uh, Humalog MITS 25, and the health surgeon writes Humalog. Um, a lot of those area, areas we're trying to fix. We were using um, uh, nothing about 15 years ago. I had a hypo um, with one of my type ones. He, I walked in to see him on the ward, and he was almost unconscious. He says, I'm having a hypo, and no one's here to help me. So I went looking for something. And the nursing staff said, go to the kitchen. So I went to the kitchen, and there was nothing in the kitchen cupboards. So I had to try and find some glucose from somewhere. In the end, it was faster to run back to the department, get some glucose, and come back and treat him. From those sort of instances, we've moved on, and we now use um, this, not the same one, but similar to this one. It's what we call a hypo pack. It's, it's treatment all in one. 
So uh, I think you were saying before, Gail, that it's fast and effective because it is. So you've got um, rapid acting glucose here in a pack. We've got a little bit of carbohydrate. It's not a meal to follow up the hypo 15 minutes later when it's resolved. And then for the medical records, we've got, we use, are now using um, a sticker that goes in the medical records to say that these patients have had a hypo. Now, if you're doing a medical round and you see a lot of these stickers, you know something's wrong with this patient. Either that or you need glasses. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to leave, I've only bought three, but these are the 15 gram ones because most of the country likes 15 gram. But if you get the opportunity to taste it, most of our patients say it's not disgusting like what we used to use. So just touching on very briefly my third study, and this is where I got the idea from. Um, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> no, it's a solution. <laughs> and it, anyway, the, this young lady volunteered um, to to have her uh, picture taken because she's very proud of the pump. Um, she does have hypos on the pump, and and we do use the weight-based treatment in pumps. However, once they get below three, mm -hmm. the recommendations basically say she should have 20 grams of carbohydrate, which is probably reasonable for someone that size. But if you get a, a larger person, they tend to need more glucose to treat a hypo when, the, well, when they're in the twos than what the guidelines stated. So we, d we decided to conduct a study into pumps. So we've got an adult arm and we've got a paediatric arm. And what we decided to do is, is just analyse, we, we've got a weight-based formula for um, treating a hypo and then we compared that against the standard what, what is available. So adults, what, what the national guidelines state is, you give them 15 grams and then if they're in the two to three range, no, three, two to one range, then you give them 30 grams. So they need more treatment. But if you did weight base, they'll, they'll get significantly more treatment. And that's the same with children. In children, between four and three, they got 10 grams. And between three and two, they got 20 grams. But in the weight based treatment, they get a more appropriate amount of glucose. So what we, what we found when we concluded the study is that these are, and I apologise, 72. I, I presented the study at, the, at an American conference um, uh, in August. And the Americans were quite interested in that. We are, well, in our region, we are looking at managing people by weight base. They've never thought of it over there. So, so basically, if you have a look at the people on the control group, the, the people in the control group um, in the adult population, um, oh, where's that pointer gone? Fifty-nine point seven percent were resolved in one treatment of the international guidelines. But if you use the weight-based formula, I'm going to give up on this. Um, Eighty-one percent resolved. In the children, 62% on the, on the control group responded, where 81 again in the weight base. So you got a better response treating them on weight. And if you wanted to have a look at the difference, the glucose change in weight base minus the, the change in the control group, if you have a look at this change here, there's a significant difference between the two groups at 10 minutes in the adults, but it's most effective at the 30 minute time frame, where in children it is most effective in 10 minutes. So in other words, they've got a better response in 10 minutes. 
that's the end of the study, so um, I'm just going to now just shift direction a little bit and go on to hypoglycemia unawareness. Um, hypoglycemia awareness is basically hypoglycemia in the absence of symptoms. And so these largely occur in the people trying to get near enough to normal diabetes control. Um, I see Elaine's walked in. Is she still in here? Um, with our population, I believe, and I've pulled a number out of the air, it, it, it tends to occur in people who uh, have got a haemoglobin A1C less than 40 millimoles. So once you're starting to get into the 30s, which is very normal, you must actually start questioning, are they having hypos? Because that's getting really too tight with their control. Um, those people that you know have got documented hypoglycemia, if they've got lots of hypos, then you need to question how low are they getting before they feel the symptom, and um, how, how, you know, what's causing this multitude of, of hypos. And then the other thing, it is extremely dangerous. And I remember seeing a patient um, many years ago who drove from Pauperam to Wellington, or he hoped to anyway, and um, he had hypoglycemia unawareness and he left Pauperam, he thought he had, a, he didn't test, he thought he had a good blood glucose, but he didn't quite get, in, get to um, where he was going into Wellington. He ended up in um, ICU with uh, bilateral fractured uh, legs and hips because of the fact that he was driving along and then he just blacked out. That's it. So essentially it is really dangerous and we, it's probably more common than that we actually see. Um, it's, it's especially seen in people with type 1 diabetes with a long duration. Um, some people who have got auto, autonomic neuropathy. And I talked earlier on about the glucose receptors in the brain. Well, the more hypos you have, the receptor in the brain resets itself down. So when you start feeling hypoglycemia at, at 3.6, well, that receptor may start setting it down to what they think. Well, it, your brain thinks is normal at more like three. Now, the difference between three and going unconscious, the gap gets smaller. Um, and then there are some medications that are out there, such as the old um, beta blockers. They mask hypoglycemia, so you, you, you're not um, able to detect hypos coming on. Treatment. Uh, we aim to raise blood glucose levels over a, a, a one month to three month period to actually reset that receptor back in the brain. Um, we encourage more accurate carbohydrate counting. Often people will actually get the carbohydrate counting counts wrong. What they think they're eating and what they're actually eating is different uh, content and then they're dosing on the higher content, dosing insulin on the higher content. Um, another common situation is uh, they will correct and then within three hours they'll try correcting again because they start thinking, hey, this blood glucose level is not coming down. And then after a while what happens, it stacks on itself, especially um, if, you, you know, if, you've, if you're just panicking about trying to get this blood glucose level down. So we try and teach to not stack, uh, to, to, to dose outside the three hour time frame. Um, some people don't test, but they're giving multiple daily injections and they're having lots of hypos, so we've got to try and get those people to, to um, consider testing more frequently. Uh, adjust the insulin doses, adjusting them back down. We use a rule of, if they're having hypos, then drop the dose by 20%, and if that's too much, you can always raise it by 10%. Always test before driving whether you're having hypoglycemia awareness or not. That's your insurance policy. If you haven't tested and there's a motor vehicle accident, the insurance company will do their best to get out of an insurance claim because you have diabetes and you haven't tested before you got in because the Land Transport Agency ruling is all patients on insulin 
I just don't know your ears should test before they start driving. And then in some cases, uh, refer them on to the secondary care service for continuous glucose monitoring. And that gives us 288 blood glucose recordings in a day over about a seven, five to seven day time frame. And we can visually see where the errors are occurring. Um, I think you had enough of me. So um, have you got any questions before we break for coffee? Um, what's your hypo still use for um, GDM? Uh, we, we, we tend to still use, I believe, weight base. We're using weight base in GDM. Um, I don't, the only customer I don't know, but we don't have to see if that when you're high in GDM, because I suppose this can That's a tough one. Um, everyone's got their own different way of doing things. I just get them to have something to eat rather than treat it as a uh, let's give them glucose because that's just going to make it more difficult. But if they have something to eat, then at least we're getting some um, uh, carbohydrate in and that will make them over a period of time, short period of time, feel better. Um, some people prefer to treat the hypo glucose but then you, you're going to make them higher again. Uh, so that's a difficult one. So over time, you're just going to try and get their hemoglobin A1 down, C1 down slowly. And the, the glucose receptor will set, reset itself. Thank you.